how to derive the formula for the analog Butterworth low pass. In one of my previous videos, I explained why do we need analog prototype filters for parametric equalizers. And in that video, I used an out of the box formula for the Butterworth low pass. Some of you asked me to show the derivation of this formula in a video form. So Amber, Jason, thank you for raising this issue. And if you would like to see that derivation in a written form, it's already present at my blog at dwolfsound.com and I have linked to it in the description below. In this video, I won't be explaining what is an analog filter or why do we need it. If you want to know that, then I also put the links to the previous videos where I already explained that in sufficient detail. This video will only be the mathematical derivation. So if you only want to know how to derive the formula for the analog Butterworth low pass, then I invite you to watch this video. Okay, so the first thing we need to consider is what we want to derive. Here is the ideal low pass filter amplitude response. And with the Butterworth formula, we want to approximate it in a specific way. So on the x-axis, we have the frequency, analog frequency in radians per second. And on the y-axis, we have the amplitude response of the filter. So the first thing you need to clarify is what we actually want to derive. We want to derive an analog system and we'll denote it by h of s. And this is what it's called its transfer function. It's the transfer function in the s domain. Then h of j omega is its complex valued frequency response. And then the magnitude of the frequency response is the amplitude response. So what you can see here is the amplitude response of an ideal low pass filter and we can call this ideal response as HLP of J omega. Okay, and the last thing that we need is a so-called squared magnitude response. And this is the amplitude response raised to the power of two. This is squared magnitude response. So what we want to derive is a system H of S such that its amplitude response is somehow similar, approximate the ideal amplitude response. And as you can see, our ideal low pass filter has a cutoff frequency equal to one. And what the Butterworth derivation takes is that it approximates this plot with the Taylor series expansion around the frequency of omega zero. Let me show you what I mean by this. So, right. Tyler series at omega equal to zero. So, we'll write that our h of j omega is equal to some k0 plus k1 omega plus k2 omega squared and so on. It's an infinite series. And then you can write it in a sum form. k omega to the power of k. And each k k is 1 over 
factorial of k, then the kth derivative of our amplitude response. And this is evaluated at omega equal to zero with k zero equal to h of zero. Now to make this derivation easier, we introduce a helper function, which is a complex function of a complex variable s. And we'll call it f, so f of s is equal to h of s times h of minus s. And it's easily shown that if we substitute s equal to j omega, then we obtain exactly the squared magnitude response. Okay, so how the squared magnitude response looks in the case of our Taylor approximation. So here we have our approximation and uh, to have the squared uh, magnitude response, we just take the magnitude and raise it to the power of two. Now, uh, you may be thinking like, how can we now multiply all those terms inside? How can we make it an absolute uh, value and magnitude? Well, uh, we don't have to, because we know that our filter is a rational function. And in this case, because we're raising, we're making a magnitude of it and raising it to the power of two, this function will be even. So we can write it in a general form. So we already know we have our f of j omega is equal to d0 plus some d2 omega 2 plus d4 omega to the power of 4 and we know that the order must be even so we have d2m omega 2 2m and it's a rational function. So we have some c0, c2 of omega squared, and c4 of omega 4, c2n omega 2. So a couple of notes here. This is a very general form. So we now don't know what M, capital M, or capital N might be. Additionally, we may observe that this is easier to treat than what we had before, because here our f of j omega is a real function of a real variable omega. And that's a very, very important thing because it means that we can use basically high school mathematics, so very basic analysis tools to derive the final formula. Now looking at this formula right here, we can already make some assumptions. So as you remember, our ideal low pass filter has a value of one at the frequency of zero. And that's also the point at which we chose our Taylor series approximation. So we know that we want also our f of zero to be equal to one, because one is also a squared magnitude of one. Okay, and uh, it's quite easy now to see that we obtain d zero over C0 should be equal to one. And that means that C0 is equal to D0 and that C0 mustn't be zero. That's a very important property already. 
Okay, now let's go back to our ideal low pass filter. And here we can see that uh, for the frequency tending towards infinity, we want our ideal amplitude response to be zero. So our squared magnitude response will also be zero. And we can write this like this f of j infinity should be equal to zero. And this means that basically if we substitute infinity for the frequency, we should obtain zero. But in practical terms, it means that the order of the polynomial in the denominator should be higher than the order of the polynomial in the numerator. So we can already write that n is greater than m and c of 2n mustn't be zero because then the effective power of the denominator would be smaller. This simplifies the problem a bit already, but we can take it a step further with another trick. We'll use something that's called an error formulation. And that means that we write our f of j omega as one, because that's the desired value at zero, plus some error, which is dependent, of course, on the frequency. So we substitute it again to our formula, which is very general. And we obtain one plus error of omega is equal to d0 plus d2 omega squared plus plus d2m omega to the power of 2m divided by c0 plus c2 plus omega squared plus c2m uh sorry c to n omega to 2 n. Okay, and of course, what we now do, we subtract this one to have a formula for E. So we'll have uh, E of omega is equal to, and now uh, it's not that easy to write, but I will try. So we have d0 minus c0 plus, plus d2 minus c2 omega squared plus d2m minus c2m because as you remember n is greater than m so here we have omega to the power of 2m and now minus c2m plus 2 omega 2m plus 2 and this minus goes on and on until we arrived at c2n omega 2n <sighs> we made it and here we have still the same denominator. All right, and now of course it's an error, so we want to minimize it. How can we do this? Well, um, we can bring it as close to zero as we can. And as you can see, Omega is uh, a variable, so it will change. So how can we ensure that it actually stays as close as possible to zero? Well, we can do this by zeroing this coefficients, right? So with the constraints that we had before here, we can now write that we want c0 equal to 
d0 and we already had that before so that's nothing new but then we also know that we have c2 equal to d2 which makes this coefficient 0 and it goes on and on until we arrive here because here we have c2m is equal to d2m and then we have these minus so here we can simply set the c coefficients to zero right so we have c2m plus 2 is equal to zero and then we go on until the highest power so we have c2n minus 2 is equal to zero and here as you remember we cannot set c2n to zero right because of this oh, sorry because of this constraint so we must keep c to n is different from zero okay and uh, the thing is that well if we choose d0 then we already have c0 if we have whatever we choose for d2 we already have it for C2. So these coefficients in the middle uh, are not important like what their R values are. So we can simply set them to zero. And we'll also get zero multiplied by these powers. Uh, what is more, it will simplify the expression in the denominator. And uh, for c0 and d0 since they're also one sets the other we can simply choose one so after all this we are left with the following maybe let me write it here so we have c0 equal to d0 we set it to one because it will uh, diminish this error anyways and then these we set to zero this we set to zeros these are zeros already and this one stays so now we can put this into our formulation for f and what do we obtain we have f of j omega equal to 1 over 1 plus plus c to n omega to n and now the last thing actually that we need at this stage is what's the value of this coefficient c to n and as you remember here the cutoff frequency was 1 and in the analog filters the cutoff frequency means a frequency at which uh, the amplitude response of the signal is exactly half or the power is uh, or the the in the logarithmic scale is minus minus 3 db so we can simply write that we want our f of 1 to be equal to 1 half so what we get here we have 1 plus 1 plus c 2n is equal to 1 over 2 and some complicated maths give us that c 2n is equal exactly to 1 but we're not done yet because what we obtained is the squared magnitude response which looks as follows but what we actually want to obtain is the analog system which is formulated in the s domain and for this we'll need to go back as you remember and use the definition of f of s to obtain our desired 
Okay, so from here to the transfer function, we can go by substituting omega is equal to s over j, because as you remember, s is equal to omega j in this case. So uh, we obtain f of j omega is equal to 1 over 1 plus minus s squared to the power of n. So now let's examine the poles of this transfer function. The poles are found by equating the, nominate, the denominator to 0. This gives us my minus n to the power of n times s to the power of 2n is equal to minus 1. So now we multiply this by minus 1 to the power of n. So we have minus 1 to 2n, s to n, and minus 1, the power of n plus 1. And so this is of course equal to 1, because the power here is even. And so we obtain that s to n is equal to minus 1 if n is even or 1 if n is odd. So now to obtain the poles uh, we need to perform uh, the root of order 2n, but it is a complex root. It means that it has exactly 2n values. So let me write down this formula real quick. Okay, so here we have this formula. So the poles are equal to e to the power of j times p pi plus 2k pi divided by 2n if n is even or they're equal to e to the power of j 2k pi divided by 2n if n is odd. And as you can see in both of these cases, we have exactly uh, two n poles, which are uh, spaced equally, so with an equal angle around the unit circle. So once again, we obtain the poles of f of s, which is equal to h of s and h of minus s. So in both these cases, we have the S plane. And this is the unit circle. So these poles are placed around the unit circle. And as you could see, there are exactly two n poles, which means that they are symmetrically placed on the both sides of the S half planes. So now we want to factorize our f of s. As we know, if we want our h of s, which is our goal, to be stable, then it must have poles 
on the left side of the half plane. Only then this filter will be stable. And so the h of minus s will get the other half of the poles. The thing is that it is easier to find the poles of the h of minus s which are on the right half plane and then simply to negate the real part and that's exactly what we'll do. So, we want to take SK, say that poles of H of minus S, SK such that the argument of SK belongs to the right half plane, right? So it's, it is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And now we can take these arguments and substitute them into specific equations. So this part should be between minus pi over 2 and but below pi over 2 and the same for this part and this gives us a limitation on k okay so these inequalities will give us some uh, limitations on the values of k Basically, we're taking the SK, which were defined here, and we're only picking those for which K yields an SK whose argument leads in this range. So the next thing that we'll do, it will negate this arguments of H of minus S to obtain the poles of the h of s. So the poles of h of s are simply, let's write it like this, s of k h s is equal to um, negated real part of SKH of minus S plus the imaginary part of the SKH of minus S. So we only negate the real part to obtain the symmetric pole. And this is easily done by simply negating the complex conjugate of these poles. So let me now write the formula with the proper k indices. And as you'll notice, it's very easy to make a mistake here. So I'll write this. So as you can see, we limited the range of k to lie in the right half plane, and then we negated the real parts so that li they lie in the left half plane. And now with this, we can synthesize the factorized version of h of s. 
Okay, so here we have our transfer function and we can now insert the formula for the poles and simplify this. Uh, it needs to be carried out separately for n even and n odd. So we'll start with n odd. And now we can beautify it by factoring out the s equal to minus one pole and also combining the other poles that are complex conjugates of each other. Let me show you what I mean by this. After multiplying the factors in the denominator, we can then come up with a nice formula involving simple trigonometric functions. We are now iterating over other integers that in the case of k, because remember we combined the poles that were complex conjugates of each other. So m uh, iteration doesn't have the non-positive integers. And we can do the same thing for the n even case. The equations that we obtained are the final equation for the Butterworth analog low pass filter. If you want to check out the derivation in full detail, the link is in the description to the article over at dwolfsum.com. When there's more commentary, maybe you'll find the written form easier. If you benefited from this video, please consider buying me a coffee over at buymeacoffee.com slash Jan Wilczek. Also, if you liked the video and you would like to get notified about the newly published videos, you can subscribe to the channel and turn on notification. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Take care.